Droughts and floods are by far and away the most serious and frequent threats to Thailand. But a combination of money, governance, and geography make these extremely difficult problems to beat. Kem Ling, or Monkey Chi, is a flood control measure based on the vision of King Bumibon Adunyadeo of Thailand. The idea stems from his observation that monkeys store bananas in their cheeks, conserving them to eat later. He applied this concept to the problem of flooding in Bangkok. Storing excess water in North Thailand would slow its progress towards Bangkok and allow it to be used when rainfall slackened. Kem Ling has now become the conceptual seed that influences most modern Thai flood management, and indeed embodies ideas at the very heart of contemporary disaster management. This video will examine how the story of King Rama Nain's dream for his kingdom can teach valuable lessons on the enduring power of ideas, their interaction with real-world complexity, and how communication from the right platform can change the world we live in forever. So what's the problem? The country's capital, Bangkok, lies at the mouth of the country's biggest flood basin. And major floods commonly occur when rains from the north surge down over the central plains too quickly and with too much force to be stopped. Drought is also common, with the annual Songkran New Year celebrations often being curtailed by bans on the customary water fights as the country dries up in the scorching hot season. Whether it's too much or too little, managing water is the big question for Thailand. Governance has also historically been an issue for flood management, as is typical in Asian countries. Huge top-down structural projects like the building of dams are often enacted with little to no consideration of the communities that have to relocate or have their lives disrupted. This one-sided approach keeps on proving to be ineffective at achieving successful flood risk management. Bangkok and the surrounding areas are at particular risk. Once known as the Venice of the East for its extensive network of canals, or klongs, in Thai, the city now has a population somewhere between 10 and 20 million, up from around 350,000 a hundred years ago. But as well as this massive growth, it has also simultaneously removed its own irrigation system. The canals and waterways have been filled in to make way for roads to transport cars, or have simply fallen to a state of poor condition. Not only that, but the immense weight of the new construction means that Bangkok is actually sinking at a rate of 3 centimeters a year, with some reports predicting vast swathes of the city will be underwater by 2030. So to summarize the problems for flooding in Bangkok from the north, heavy rainfall causes overflows from rivers and regular passages following gravity down the flood basin towards the sea, with Thailand's biggest city by far in the way. High tides from the sea mean you can't drain water like you might otherwise do. This is because the land has sunken below sea level in lots of places, meaning the water does not run off into the sea. And to cap it off, the drainage system isn't anywhere near extensive enough to accommodate excess water. What is there is often inefficient because tunnels are blocked with rubbish or aren't big enough, and land that used to be rice fields has gradually been swallowed up by construction sites for Bangkok's high rises. So what are the strategies for cabling water retention? While people have been working on things like digging out massive drainage tunnels and pipes under the city, the real focus of Kamling is retention areas. Ponds, lakes, reservoirs, underground or overground, all basically extra space for water to go. Dams are certainly the big human artificial version of this, but come with a lot of their own downsides. So how do we implement Kamling? Find the place to serve as a storage reservoir to divert flood water into, build connections to the storage reservoirs, release the water so it flows out of the reservoir regularly when the water level of storage canals is higher than sea level so that they don't get too full. That's it, quite a simple idea that underpins an approach to flood management. Don't try to stop rains from happening, but rather organize things in a way that, when they do, you can use it constructively. So how has this been implemented in reality? Because of the high profile of the concept, Kame Ling has kind of acted as a big focal point for referring to all flood management projects in Thailand in general. It's often cited by government officials for projects like the work done in 2009 on Pyao Lake in the north, which had become a degraded water source clogged by weeds and sediment. There's also a plan to excavate a double-deck cut and cover facility beneath the existing 6 to 8 lane eastern outer ring road that stretches 100 kilometers from the northern suburbs of Bangkok and runs parallel with the river. During normal times, the lower deck would remain reserved as a drainage channel while the upper deck would accommodate another six lanes of highway traffic to the already heavily congested highway above. There are also non-structural measures that you can consider, like land use planning and relevant regulations. The Thai government's been making some really refreshing progress towards participatory collaborations, with the law requiring all new projects to have public consultation, something which has actually resulted in the blocking of a few projects that would previously have been steamrolled anyway. But there are still many of the same problems that have always been there for Thailand. Even when government agencies cite Kame Ling as their guiding principle, Thai flood management has struggled to move away from relying on big projects. Like most cities, Thai cities had become increasingly reliant on large-scale technocentric structures like levees and flood control dams 
challenge. The biggest issue with such protection structures is not only the false hopes and sense of security they generate, they also transform regular events like seasonal floods happening every year into rare interruptions that people get complacent about. In countries marked by power imbalances in water resource management, public agencies may impose flood retention areas, but the absence of agreements with farmers can reduce the effectiveness of the measure. But this isn't to say that setting up came link projects with the consent of the local communities that it affects is the end of story either. Faced with a flood crisis in which waters keep rising every day, it's possible to get the monkey cheek concept wrong. If a minor flood event happens and the water is stored within the monkey cheek retention areas, there might not be enough space to accommodate a subsequent bigger storm. Monkey cheek retention areas should be flooded at low levels rather than waiting for them to fill up entirely. But the power of the concept of came link has meant that difficulties in applying it from a government level have been circumvented by local communities taking up the idea. Ayutthaya is a small city directly north of Bangkok in the same path on the Chow Phraya Basin, and its location between three rivers mean that its colloquial nickname as the island can prove literal in times of flood. This was the case in 2011 when the city was inundated with flood water. Interestingly, the Ayutthaya case study has shown that decentralized, meaningful public engagement, read kind of being forgotten about by the authorities and left to fix it yourself, can occur as a response to the perceived lack of political will to change the status quo. In the aftermath of the 2011 flood, through small neighborhood-based and everyday acts of altruism, the people of Ayutthaya began to reclaim their roles in the flood management process. For example, in recent years, local communities have begun their own non-state funded water retention projects. Armed with the guiding principle of Kame Ling, stakeholders have taken it upon themselves to manage the land they live on in order to make it more resilient to flood events. This has also been seen extensively in the northeast of Thailand, where droughts are common and devastating the region's farmlands, making water retention especially vital. A renowned architect, Kochakorn Vorakum, has also begun to lead by example with the design of the Centenary Park at Chulalongkorn University, the first new green space in Bangkok in 30 years. The building is built around the concept of retaining water as well as providing a beautiful public space. The implementation of Kameling flood management schemes is still very much a work in progress. But now the idea seems to have taken root, as it were, in the wider population. From locals agreeing to dig out new retention ponds, and allowing rice fields to flood when needed, to famous architects paving the way by example in Bangkok, Kameling is becoming a concept embraced throughout Thai society. Which brings me to the crux of this video, the beauty of a simple idea communicated effectively. In disaster management, we have the concept of the disaster cycle, mitigate, prepare, respond, recover, and and repeat. We now know that spending time and money in the stages before a disaster saves far more lives and far more money. But where the traditional understanding of this cycle uses time, the Chow Phraya Basin in Bangkok demonstrate this same idea in physical space. Prepare upriver before the floods reach Bangkok and the crisis can be averted. The lesson is the same. I think the essential ideas that the monkey cheek concept is trying to communicate, balance, management, adaptation, are all embodied in a simple, clear image from the natural world that arguably lingers in the mind far longer than statistics or facts do. To succeed in disaster management, hear floods, but really this applies to anything. You have to make sure that everyone's on board before you start. King Ramanayan has taught us that perhaps the best way to achieve this, you have to make sure that your idea speaks to and can be heard by everyone in it.